what we're going to do here today, we're going to draw the pond down. We're going to take uh, all of the females who are ready to spawn, and they will be hit on the head. And they'll be brought over here, and their eggs will be stripped, and then you'll take the males. You'll squirt the sperm from the males in with the eggs and mix it in. Then they'll be taken up to the hatchery. Long of the king's goal today. is to maintain viable salmon fisheries. To do that requires protecting and restoring salmon habitat, rebuilding naturally spawning salmon runs, and lastly, using hatcheries properly. Hatcheries are controversial today, but if they are sited and managed right, they can provide healthy fish for people to catch that don't interfere with wild fish. Glenwood Springs is such a hatchery. The Glenwood Springs Hatchery in East Sound on Orcas Island was the first demonstration project of Long Live the Kings. It's a vision of hatcheries of the future. Small, simple, using water sources that never had any fish in it to start with, where you grow fish in ponds in a natural condition, you release them into a healthy estuary, and there's no wild fish in, in East Sound except those that may wander in, but there's no spawning wild fish. So, so the, the fish in here can be uh, caught in a terminal area fishery without any damage to wild fish. Today, they brought a class from Cleveland High School in Seattle to participate in the annual spawning of the returning king salmon. They're gonna take you for a ride. 30 pounds of muscle. The hatchery was started by Long Live the King's chairman of the board, Jim Youngren. He channeled a natural spring on his property to this holding pond, which is connected by a fish ladder to salt water. A lot of these kids uh, don't ever get out of the city. To get them out in an environment like this, I think opens up their eyes. The more exposure like this that these kids can have, it's gonna be meaningful for the rest of their lives. We don't focus on the younger generation, obviously, and focus on people in urban settings and say, here's something you can continue to have in the Northwest, uh, but you've got to at least be aware of it. And a lot of these kids aren't aware of it, and to see the expressions on these kids' faces as they go through this spawning process with us and, and see salmon for the first time and begin to learn something about their story, I guess that's as much as what Long of the Kings is all about as anything else. Tagged king salmon from Glenwood Springs had been caught from southern Oregon to Alaska. During their three to five years at sea, these fish contribute to all sport and commercial fisheries. The number of surviving adults that make it back to the hatchery average from 2,000 to 5,000 fish some weighing 50 pounds in their prime. By communicating to kids that we, as adults, care about our environment and care about what we leave for future generations, we are setting examples and demonstrating that decisions today will impact the future for our children tomorrow. We have been guilty of basing too many decisions on short-term profits rather than considering the long-term effects of these decisions on our natural resources. The Pacific salmon are declining in the southern part of their range, but there are dramatic examples of reversing that trend. These are resilient creatures. Thoughtful restoration efforts by volunteer groups, public agencies, and tribes are swelling their numbers on many streams.